Hey people, setting a solid foundation is so important. If you get off to the right start, you put yourself in a better position to finish strong. Priming when it comes to painting is not really a new concept, but it's not always clear which primer you should use for a specific job, and in some cases, whether you need to use it at all. If you had any questions about paint primers, then stay tuned because class is in session. I'm James from thepaintpeople.com and welcome to Paint School. While a portion of our audience are pretty comfortable with a paintbrush, I know a lot of you aren't completely familiar with the more technical aspects of painting. Coincidentally, that's what this series is all about, to provide you with a crash course on some of the fundamental aspects of painting and decorating. Before we get into some of the nitty gritty details, let's quickly go over what is priming and what is its purpose. Priming a surface means that you are prepping it for the eventual finish coats. Primers have a lot of similarities to paint, but their main focus is to improve adhesion of the top coat by providing a more uniform finish for it to stick to, and also to aid in coverage by blocking smoke stains, grease, tannin bleed, and even really dark or bright colors. A lot has developed over the years with all the products at your disposal, including a ton of high-end self-priming paints that have seemingly made the idea of priming obsolete to a lot of people. Based on that, especially if you're simply painting a wall, you may assume that priming would be a complete waste of time. Why not just get a self-priming paint rather than first priming it and then applying your finish coats? The thing is, a paint that is self-priming doesn't actually contain a mixture of paint and primer in one can. When it comes down to it, it's just a paint that has the ability to act as if the surface was primed due to its enhanced coverage. There are a lot of cases, however, that you simply can't replace the right primer for the right project. There are three major categories of paint primers that exist, and within those broad categories, you will have a ton of different product options depending on what you're painting. The first one is latex primers. Water-based primers are quite possibly some of the more popular all-purpose primers that exist today. Because they're not chemically rigid like some of the other primers out there, they tend to be less susceptible to cracking due to their flexible nature. Latex primers are a very popular choice for drywall and soft woods, and they also have the added benefit of being fast drying and very easy to clean and deal with. With the growing need to produce environmentally friendly products, latex-based primers will also tend to be lower in volatile organic compounds, which means they're going to be better for the environment. They're also going to be better for anyone in the vicinity because they usually don't smell as much as the other products out there. Speaking of fumes, oil-based primers have been an industry standard for quite a while, largely due to their versatility. Other than the obvious differences in drying time and the more difficult cleanup, in general, oil-based primers are going to be more likely to block certain stains. This is why you'd be more likely to use an oil-based primer over smoke stains, because if you try to cover it with a standard water-based primer or paint, you may find yourself having to do a couple extra finish coats to ensure that those nicotine stains will be covered properly. While oil-based primers will unfortunately have a slower drying time than its water-based counterparts, it has that extended open time, which means it will do a better job at penetrating the substrate it's being applied on, which is why it's so widely used on wood. The main things you need to consider is the fact that oil-based finishes tend to harden with time, which is both their gift and their curse. The finish will be rock solid, but it could be prone to cracking, especially on wood that is likely to contract and expand through the changes of temperature. Finally, the third category of primers are shellac-based or alcohol-based primers. The main solvent within a shellac primer is denatured alcohol, which is also the thinning agent you would need to use it properly. This category of primers is an interesting one because it sort of combines benefits from the other two into one product. Shellac primers excel at blocking stains, and they even block smells for those jobs where you're trying to conceal that heavy smoking odor you can find in some properties. Like oil primers, they're also great at blocking tannins from bleeding through a top coat and can be used with both water-based and alkyd products. Another awesome quality is the drying time for shellac primers. They dry incredibly fast and I've comfortably applied a top coat over it in less than an hour. As I mentioned earlier, you do need to clean and thin it with denatured alcohol but it's a negligible inconvenience considering its upside. It does have a bit of an odor, 
as well as VOC emissions, so that's a drawback. And it's also sensitive to high temperatures, which means its primary use is reserved for interior spaces, not so much exterior outside of spot touch-ups. But for those special use cases where you're really concerned about the performance of a water-based or oil-based primer, shellac primers are handy dandy. Now there are always exceptions to the rule. You'll have some oil-based primers that are fast drying and odorless, and then you'll have water-based primers that bond and seal surfaces way beyond what a traditional primer would do. And on that note, there is that one unicorn primer that I wanted to mention that is technically a water-based product, but it is so much more. It's the urethane enforced acrylic primer called Styx, and we put the spotlight on it recently right over here. It's a waterborne primer that will stick to almost anything. Drywall, wood, metal, plastic, glass tile, the list goes on and on. If you have any primer related questions, let us know in the comment section below. Like if you like this, subscribe if you want more. That's it for this one. See you on the next one.